I'd like to welcome our first sponsor to the official Do Good Better podcast, and that is Donor Doc. Listen, as a nonprofit, Donor Doc knows that you wear many different hats, and that's why they are here to help you make your life easier. Donor Doc helps you connect with your donors on a deeper level and provides you with the tools to become the ultimate fundraiser. There are other instantly cool features too, but we know connecting and staying connected with your donors are high on most of your priority lists. Hey, and guess what? Donor Doc is so awesome, and I'm telling you, so awesome that to everyone listening, they are giving you a 100% discount off your first month. That's right, 100% off. It's absolutely free to use for your first month. All you have to do is use the referral code Do Good Better, and you're set. Again, do good better. It's simple. It's easy. Head to DonorDoc.com to learn more and get started. Hey, thanks, DonorDoc, for being an official sponsor of the official Do Good Better podcast. I was a single mom. I was a high school dropout. I was a teen mom that was determined to not be that stereotypical high school dropout, welfare, forever type person. Your organization is awesome, but sometimes you want to be even awesomer. It's time to get your fundraising on with your host, fundraising expert and author, Patrick Kirby. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the official Do Good Better podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Kirby. And of course, this is a show for the small and medium-sized nonprofits doing wonderfully great big things. And we have a wonderful show for you tonight. Today, whenever you're listening and finding this on your uh, favorite podcast streams, uh, we have uh, Dara Moore. She is the founder of Changing Your Conversation. She's with us today. Dara, how are you today? I'm wonderful. How about you? I am doing awesome. I can't wait to uh, have a conversation uh, with you today. So if somebody's clicking through, they're looking at YouTube, they're saying, uh, Changing Your Conversation, I've never heard of such a thing, but it sounds good on paper. Give us a kind of a 5,000 foot view on what your organization does and how you started. So the belief of changing your conversation is you change the conversation with yourself, you're going to change your future. So we help underprivileged and at-risk women learn to gain confidence so they can move forward confidently in the workforce, move from a minimum wage job to a better one that gives them a real salary and has a future. We, our goal at the end of the day is to end the cycle of poverty among women and single moms and give them the confidence that they can move forward and make a place and set a future and just give them that role model they need. A yeah. lot of them don't have it. That's, uh, that's fantastic. How did you get started? What, what, what was the impetus of kind of creating this and, and, and why at-risk women? And uh, what, was the, what was the reason behind that? So the catalyst for changing your conversation actually came when I was laid off suddenly. Um, right. I was in a, yeah. a position I loved. I loved my job. Um, this company, well, I lo- I still have respect for the company. I understand why they did what they did, but in a matter of an hour, they laid off 300 people across the country. And while I had been put in a position to where I was okay during that time, I watched, watched a lot of women struggle. And it reminded me of my previous struggles. I was a single mom. I was a high school dropout. I was a teen mom that was determined to not be that stereotypical high school dropout welfare person. And out of all of this came a natural inclination to help these women that I saw struggling to just be that friend and that mentor that they needed. And I'm like, there's got to be more than just my immediate circle that need this. And so I very quickly developed the motto, the, the philosophy of be that person I needed in that time. So that's why at risk women is I see um, in certain socioeconomic standpoints, they don't see anything other than struggle, than lack, than minimum wage. I, a lot of my clients, like I've never seen someone have a salary. Mm. So when you're talking about what do you make for a job and you're trying to sell, you don't look at an hourly wage, look at a salary. Oh, I apologize. I thought I have everything on do not disturb. (laughs) Um, They've never seen that. Mm -hmm. So that is my goal is to help and show them that there's a better way that it's going to take some work, but 
that's yeah. A, yeah, I really like that. So what describe to me some of the programs, the the, the services and and some of the 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 work that you do uh, with individuals and that are that are part of your client base. So essentially, if you, um, for lack of better terms, we provide free career coaching. Hmm. Something that um, professionals have access to constantly because we have the money for it. We can afford to go spend five, six thousand dollars to have someone help us revamp our resume, write our cover letter, coach us through the interview process. We do all of that for free, as well as um, provide laptops when we have them available. Because some of our clients we discovered they don't have a home computer. Yeah. That was a concept that I did not anticipate going into this, but it's a reality for them. Mm -hmm. um, especially now with COVID things are shut down. They don't, can't go to the library yeah. to go and do jobs. So we help provide laptops when we have them available. Um, we provide a new outfit for their interview. Mm -hmm. So I'll go take them shopping and buy them a new pair of shoes and a new outfit. And we also will teach them how to shop on a budget. So we have a growing clothes closet of business clothes for mm -hmm. them to choose from as, when they get a job. And then once they do have a job and we've gotten them through that stage, we continue with another 90 days of life coaching to help navigate these new relationships, learn how to budget and plan financially for the future. Because at the end of the day, what we want them all to achieve is financial independence and stability. Yeah, I really like the uh, the, the long term play there, and not just a shot in the arm to get. Hey, we'll get you an interview. We'll get you, uh, you know, a, a nice jacket to wear, and then that's and then we're done. And then you just kind of wipe your hands, because I think that's where. Yeah, and I think I think none of us as uh, without sort of uh, additional reinforcement and just sort of practice with a lot of this stuff, especially if you don't do this on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I think you need a little extra hand holding, um, which is great because then you're setting them up for long term success rather than just immediate. Um, this worked out for maybe a couple of days, uh, sort of bit. That's awesome. Um, I like discussing with, uh, groups that are on the podcast about their big, hairy, audacious goals. What are those big dreams that you have? So currently sitting where you are changing your conversation, what are your big, hairy, audacious goals for your organization? I want to be a privately funded foundation in 20 years. Love it. Talk to me about that. What what, is, what does that look like? How much money does that make? Uh, how much? What are you What are you looking at? That looks like we have completed our initial goal of we're going to set up actual thrift stores for women uh, for business clothes. Let our clients come and shop, but then it'll also help us bring funds in. We will have staff, paid staff, because right now I donate my salary back in. Mm -hmm. I have a single goal of I will never take a penny. From the foundation, I will continue to pour into it, mm -hmm. uh, and we have an operating budget realistically of about two hundred thousand a year, so we can operate across the country. That's because awesome. with, one of the benefits with this COVID is it's taught us that we don't have to. We can still do hyper focus, hyper local, mm -hmm. but I can do this everywhere because I can't coach my clients in person right now. So why should I only be limited to Seattle women if I can help someone in Texas the same way I'm helping here? I love it. The, the social enterprise action at the avenue that you think you're pursuing is such a wonderful balance to not only fundraising, but, you know, actually building a business out of it. And from that, you can probably train uh, individuals who are going through your program, how to start their own business at the end of this thing too. So that's a wonderful uh, goal. I like, I, I have a feeling with your uh, energy, I think you might get there in a little less than 20 years. So I'm going to hold on to that. Um, as far as services and social services and, and even job uh, preparers, et cetera, um, what do you do differently at changing your conversation than other groups who might play in the same sandbox um, as you? So one of the things that I've noticed, because again, I have to do find out what's in their competitors. One, we don't charge anything. Okay. Our clients will never pay a penny. Everything we do for them, we do for free. We provide right. them. We never ask. Right. But we also do the full picture. So mm -hmm. it's so like dress for success. You can get clothes mm -hmm. and do some workshops, but you also have to get a referral in from your social worker and mm -hmm. county resources. I don't want a referral. I don't care who you are, where you come from. Yeah. I just want your heart and you want to be able to work with me and sure. willing to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So we don't just say, okay, here's clothes or here's how to help with your resume or here's financial coaching. We do it all. 
and we do it all very on a personal level. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. oh, I love that. Difference I see. That's outstanding. Um, we love to talk about um, successes. Uh, and the first part about the whole success is that anything that you can sort of give our audience as a documented success um, from someone who's gone through your program, who you've worked with from, you know, sort of dire straits to thriving uh, impeccably uh, or best as one can uh, in whatever situation that you can kind of share with us today. So our success, I would say we're slower than we had planned. Um, COVID hit just as we literally three days after um, our first workshop, our governor issued the stay home order. (laughs) So (laughs) we were like, okay, let's pivot real quick. Let's slow down. Let's change plans. So um, our clients had to adjust. Mm -hmm. Um, One of them actually even had to fall off because, well, she just couldn't. Mm-hmm. At the moment, and I understand. Sure. So, I think the biggest successes I've seen right now have been in the mindset of our clients. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one woman right now, she just went on her first interview well, yesterday, okay, because they're finally starting to hire again and businesses are opening back up. And rather than um, taking the Amazon jobs at her in the warehouse that all of her friends are going for, she interviewed for a receptionist slash marketing job at a chiropractor. Mm. This was completely outside of her comfort zone. And just the fact that she believes that she could go for it is a huge step. You know, if I, I don't know if you can put a, a value or a number value on resiliency. But that is, I think, one of the things that you are providing here that is sort of that uh, untold benefit to a lot of this. Because if you can get through a COVID-19 pandemic and still have the positivity and the wherewithal to go sort of interview and push through the process, even though it's uncomfortable, that right there, I think, is a big, uh, huge win. Speaking of big, huge wins, as an organization... Uh, and I know you're just kind of ramping up. Uh, we love to celebrate big wins with our guests. So any um, big win, small win, medium-sized win that we can share uh, a celebratory hooray for you and changing the, your conversation. I would say that our monthly contributors haven't dwindled in COVID. So awesome. that's been a huge win for us. Huge. Thank you. Yes, very big. We are still having new donors come in and we are still having people bring us laptops Mm -hmm. and physical Mm -hmm. goods that we need. So the fact that the resources are still coming in, that is a major win for us right now because we're able to continue to move forward rather than just pausing everything right now. I think think one of the big uh, contributors to successful organizations during this pandemic are those that just keep moving and keep asking. And if you do that, I think you're going to see there's a, still a lot of money out there. There's still a lot of people who want to give. And I think those who sit on their hands are going to be real disappointed that they left a lot of money on the table. But I'm glad to see that you are benefiting from still that uh, that sort of being new and being hungry and still sort of loving the idea of what you're doing. Uh, kudos to you. Um, Speaking of kudos, uh, we talk a lot about appreciation on the show. Are there a handful of people or an individual that you'd love to give a shout out to um, that have contributed to the success of the organization as you sort of created it from idea to, you know, paper to actual, I'm doing this and this is what's happening uh, organization. Who can we uh, give an audible or a visual high five to uh, for you at changing your conversation? Well, first of all, my board is amazing. Um, I have a group of very dedicated, strong women who stand behind me and support all of my crazy ideas that, okay, let's go do this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, But there's one woman in particular. She is a local community member. Her her name is Bridget Tuttle, and she's met with me to discuss things. Um, She's a small business owner. She has even donated office space to us. So I don't have to pay for office space. I have a full business address and I have a safe place, a warm, welcoming place for clients to come and meet. And that alone has just been an amazing, generous gift that has helped us be a little bit more stable during this time. Yeah, that's awesome. Bridget, kudos to you, because I think that's what a lot of startup nonprofits and a lot of um, newer nonprofits always 
benefit really well from a champion who says, I believe in your cause enough that I'm going to do X, Y, and Z above and beyond the expected. I show up at a meeting and I read a bunch of notes and I talk about a budget. And I think that's really one of the cooler versions of this uh, ask of a question that I ask normally, which is somebody stepping up so much and just providing not only space, but support and it's still a leadership role on the board. So kudos. That's a very good one. Yeah. For our women, because I come from a corporate background, mm. um, as a single mom, that t- to me gave me stability, having mm. the paycheck and the de- and the benefits and things like that. She's a small business owner, and um, she actually owns several small businesses. So she brings that balance to me of the benefit of why a small business would make a better employer than a corporate. And so that way, I have that resource available to help guide our women. Should anybody mm. like. Um, let's try this route. I'm like, okay, I have the person for you to speak with. I, I love that so much. Um, as as a, as a token of my appreciation for you being on the official Do Good Better podcast, I love to give out fundraising advice. I'm the nerdy, dorky fundraising guy that I love talking about this stuff. So, um, Dara, how can I help changing your conversation in fundraising worlds? You shoot a question, I'll give you the best advice that I possibly can give you, and go. What are a good um, virtual fundraiser besides selling bottles of wine? Ooh, that's a great one. Uh, getting asked that question a lot because you can't uh, go from point A to point B. Um, it depends what your goal is for whatever your fundraising or your event is virtually. If it's to raise a lot of money, be very purposeful in how you raise money and just say straight up, this is a fundraiser, not a friend raiser. If it is to <laughs> get a lot of friends, um, you can ask a small amount of money for a lot of people. Um, but the, the advice that I would give in a virtual atmosphere is the same I would give in a, um, in-person event is be very personal, be very, um, purposeful with your asks and your conversations. For example, if you have a specific dollar amount, be very specific on what you're trying to raise. If you have a specific ask, be very specific when you ask for that gift. Um, For example, if you have, hey, we're going to raise $5,000 and that's going to provide X, Y, and Z here at Changing Your Conversation. We're looking for individuals who can contribute $1,000. We're looking for three individuals to contribute uh, $3,000 or $1,000 a piece so that we can use it as matching gifts for this particular fundraising portion of our event. You don't have to get fancy with technology. You certainly can. Um, but having people and having the conversations in advance of your event, talking to them about where that money's going to go and what impact that's going to make and how they can help you, you know, become a more, um, uh, amazingly, uh, impactful organization and, and tying it to their gift of philanthropy is really critical nowadays because everybody's asking for money. Everybody's asking for money online. The space is kind of crowded. So to be different than everybody else, we pick up these phones. Again, I know they're supercomputers in our pocket, but we pick up these phones and we have calls or we have virtual coffees or we have safe uh, environments six feet apart where we have conversations that are very important to say, we know that um, times are weird, but this is the new reality. Uh, We're looking to raise this amount of money and this is what it's going to go for. So regardless of what platform you use and what activity you use and, and wine polls or whatever, It's having conversations with the individuals that you invite to your event in advance of the event itself to talk about the importance of why you're having the fundraiser and what that's going to go to. And could you get them to commit in advance will de-stress you for actually putting on the event in the first place because you already have money in your pocket and you already have committed gifts. And that is probably my best piece of advice if working in a digital space for online fundraising things. I love it. Thank you. And as you said, I hope that's, and I hope that's helpful to everybody listening to it. So you want to think about this a little differently, just be very purposeful with your conversations and be direct. There's, this is not the time to go with subtlety. Um, we, well, we hope that he has a gift. We do. We all hope that, uh, but what are you raising money for and how that's going to be impactful and what connections can you make? And I think asking questions like that in a, in an environment. And then again, the cool thing about using a phone is that everybody has a phone. Uh, but nobody's using it to pick it up and make phone calls. So <laughs> Surprise. And here's the thing. They're all at home still. So they're going to be at home. They're not, they're bored. They want something to do. So I figure that's a really good way to uh, to have conversations and have conversations. Um, 
Jared, this has been really, really fun. I'm really excited about not only your organization, but what you're doing and your big, hairy, audacious goals. I think this is going to be so fun. And when we come out of this uh, sort of crazy time that we live in and some things calm down, I think what you're going to find is not only an abundance of need for you and your organization, uh, but a, an abundance of people who are going to look at what you're doing and saying, this person's going to change the world. So uh, I am really excited to see and, and follow you as should everybody else. And so if you're sitting there listening or you're watching this on YouTube and you're, uh, you've got a sack full of money sitting on the couch next to you while you look at your computer, I want you to give this to changing your conversation. But how, how, Dara, how can we give you money in the first place? Tell us how we can get a hold of you. Tell us how we can donate and tell us how we can support you and your organization. Well, thank you. And yes, if you have a sack full of money, I would definitely take it, but it's a great use. Um, You can visit our website, changingyourconversation.com. There's forward slash donate to donate. Um, On the website, you'll find other ways to help. Again, volunteers. I definitely need volunteers as well as donate to our clothes closet. So as women are cleaning out their clothes, cause well, COVID quarantine, five pounds, 10 pounds. Yeah. Donate some clothes our way. Um, <laughs> and then if you want to email me directly, it's Dara, D-A-R-A at contact CYC.com. And I'd be happy to have any conversation about what we do. Outstanding. And of course, with those, uh, all those links and all that information is going to be in the show notes. So click below and, uh, and get involved and follow, uh, follow Changing Your Conversation because I think they're going to do some amazing things. I can't wait to watch it as well. Dara, thank you so much for being a guest on the official Do Good Better podcast. It's been a pleasure meeting you via this, and I'm very excited for you and what you have going on in the future. Thank you. It has been a pleasure, Patrick. Outstanding. Hey, we'll see you guys next time here on the official Do Good Better podcast. There are countless videos, books, articles, and folks out there with suggestions on how to raise more money. Of course, that's a major problem. Too much information. Do Good University has an online library of lectures, courses, and trainings that concentrate on one thing, making fundraising simple. Come join other like-minded do-gooders who are looking to unclutter their fundraising life. Enroll at Do Good University today at dogoodbetterconsulting.com.